I don't know how to go on silent. I'm scared to touch. Um, I can mute you, Bob. Hello, how are you? Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to the June 10th meeting of the Boston Art Commission. My name is Karen Goodfellow and I'm the Director of Public Art in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. And in that capacity, I'm also the Director of the Boston Art Commission. Uh, let's all take a moment to update our names and pronouns and make sure we are muted. Bob, I did just mute you and you'll have to unmute yourself when you want to, just FYI. Uh, in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually to ensure public access to the deliberations of the Boston Art Commission. The public can join this meeting through telephone and video conferencing. For those of you with us today, this meeting is being recorded and closed captioning is available. You can access it at the bottom of the screen. If you have trouble locating the button, please chat us for assistance. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and the Boston Art Commission believe that public art is any artwork installed in publicly accessible spaces where they can be experienced by everyone for free. We engage in discussions about public art in Boston in order to foster the creation and collection of artworks that reflect the people, ideas, histories, and futures of Boston, which is on the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people. We acknowledge the continuing presence of the Massachusetts as well as the Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. We also recognize the indigenous peoples represented in the city's residents in addition to those in the diaspora. For transparency and community input, artworks proposed for City of Boston property are reviewed and discussed at public meetings of the Boston Art Commission on a regular, usually monthly, this is a special case, uh, basis. Working together with the public art team and the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, the BAC is an independent board composed of two ex officio and seven volunteer, thank you for being here, community members appointed by the mayor. Uh, the BAC has exclusive authority to approve and commission artworks intended to be added to the city's collection or placed on city property. Our meetings are generally held the second Tuesday, um, although today's um, meeting is unique and our next will be on Tuesday, June 28th. And we'll hope you'll continue to join us. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture has a dedicated public art team. And very quickly, I'm Karen Goodfellow and I'm joined by my colleagues, Sarah Rodrigo and Amber Torres today. Um, and we'll add some content to the chat in case you want to meet us. Um, and I will hand over to Mark. Okay, hey, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, welcome everyone on a beautiful afternoon. I'm calling this public hearing to order at 4.06 p.m. Today, the Boston Art Commission will hold, will be holding a public meeting. I'll now take the roll call of commissioners to confirm a quorum. After I state your name, commissioners, please say here. I'll begin with Vice Chair Aqua Holmes. I'm here. Thank you, Aqua. Camilo Alvarez. Here. John Andres. Here. I believe Michael Canizzo is not here and Cara Elliott Ortega is not here. Um, Bob Freeman. Here. Brian Hone. Here. Thank you, Brian. And I believe Kim Pinder may not be here. Uh, but we still have a quorum. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. Um, uh, on the next slide, you'll see today's agenda. The full agenda is publicly posted on the city's website, boston.gov. Uh, well, we would typically at this time review the meeting minutes, but I'm going to propose as chair that we postpone last time's reading meeting minutes and this time's to our more formal normal meeting uh, in June. So um, let's skip that part and we'll move directly on to the director's report. Okay. Thanks, Mark. We have one presentation for review today. Um, the Harvest Mural and Art Program 2022 is proposed by Harbor Arts, Eastie Farm, and the Boston Public Schools for sites at the Mario Umana Academy and the Manasa E. Bradley School. We uh, received 10 emails in support, um, and uh, we also received emails uh, that were submitted for testimony, including one um, from City Councilor for District 1. And I think with that, uh, you know, you can review. We, we did have um, some concerns from community members in the emails that there was some exchange and that uh, email exchange was 
include as a PDF in your folders, but I think we also have folks in attendance who can speak um, to their interests and concerns with the project. Um, because it's a short meeting, just a cute a uh, few quick updates from across all the other public art projects, the South End Landmarks, uh, South End Landmark, South End District Landmark Commission approved the installation of Solid Ed by Victor Marker 27 Quinones at Washington Manor on yeah. Tuesday. Thank you all for being there and for those of you who spoke. Um, and next week, Daedalus will begin conservation and maintenance work on four artworks, including three sculptures by Fern Cunningham, two of which are shown on this slide. And Rixie will be, begin her install of her Glimmer Spotlight in Union Square in the next couple of weeks. Karen, can I just ask this question? Do you have a schedule for the uh, conservation of Fern's work? I'd love are, to um, document some of that. Yeah, we're working on that. We're also, um, Igwa, I was thinking about connecting with you anyway, because we're working on a blog post about it. Okay. Um, and thought, I know you had done a lot of work um, at Fern's passing about um, pulling together content honoring her and I thought it might be lovely to connect with you to talk about how do we tell that story more fully and, and really okay. invite people in. Yeah, let's connect around that. I'd love that. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Karen. On the next slide, we'll, uh, as we move into the section for review, public testimony and commission vote, uh, here's how you can participate in today's meeting. Please keep yourself muted. Uh, if you have technical difficulties during the meeting, you can ask questions in the chat and a member of staff will help you. You can also let us know that you have questions uh, using the chat function. We're here to listen and learn from each other. Please be respectful of any comments in any comments that you make. The first presentation and the only presentation today is the Harvest Mural and Art program from 2022 for 2022 season. Uh, before we ask the presenters to begin, Karen, could you provide some context for the commissioners who were not able to attend last week's meeting? Uh, sure. Um, commissioners, we uh, received a, a proposal for, for murals as part of part of this program. Uh, because of the nature of the design of the program, they did not yet have designs by the artists. The artists were being brought from various places to work with students at the schools to come up with the designs. Um, given our work and feedback we've received from different uh, community members in East Boston in the past, we felt it was important to ask um, the proponents to come back when they had the um, designs to share and to share with us what their community engagement plans would be. And so they're here today very uh, generously uh, sharing their time and um, you are also very generously sharing your time today to make sure that we can um, give the community in East Boston the um, attention um, requested um, from after last year's work. Great. Thank you, Karen. So should we begin with the presenters? Is it Matt is presenting? I'm here. Hi, Matt. Hi, everybody. And thank you so much. Um, you know, just briefly, just want to thank uh, the, the BAC and everybody that's that's here today um, for taking this extra time, making this um, accommodation for us. It, it means so much deeply to us, the schools, the kids, everybody, um, to be able to have a second uh, chance to present this project and stay on the timeline to have the murals finished for the students at their last day of school. Um, so thank you all for, for taking this extra time on a Friday when it's really beautiful out, I, it means a lot to us. So thank you. Uh, next slide. So I won't go to, I, I, I'll, I'll speak a little bit briefly to, to this um, stuff, but essentially um, we've been working with the school community um, of the Umana School and the Bradley School for um, the last uh, several months. And this, the project began last year. Um, we, the schools uh, reached out to us and said, you know, we wanna bring more murals to all of the other schools in East Boston. That was after we had um, painted several murals on the McKay School. And the other school said, we want murals too. So we started this program with, with EC Farm. Um, EC Farm is our fiscal agent for the project, but they also, um, we've been collaborating where students um, who participate in EC Farm workshops at the schools, getting their hands in soil, learning where our food comes from, learning about food justice, learning how plants grow and tending to plants and watering plants and 
you know, uh, the difference between processed food and organic food and so on and so forth. Um, these students uh, had a chance to have expressed their ideas creatively with uh, professional artists who came into their classes and they were able to um, give input and creative, uh, you know, creative input and share their ideas uh, through creative workshops. We did watercolors, painting, uh, storytelling and narrative. And um, these students have been super, super excited. And now the artists have translated their ideas into powerful murals that will be painted at the school. Um, so next slide. Um, you know, we did this, we chose farming in East Boston because, you know, East Boston being on the front lines of climate change, a lot of people, you know, feel a little bit powerless of like, you know, climate change is happening faster than we're doing anything about it. Our community is going to be hit hardest from those uh, impacts. And projects like Eastie Farm are a really great example of how people can actually do a lot um, by, you know, with EC Farm, they're, they're preserving open space and, you know, using that as an opportunity to grow food, uh, you know, combat uh, uh, food security, you know, food insecurity, and, um, and also, you know, connect neighbors with each other through this amazing, beautiful process. So um, we are painting murals to express that and express the ideas of the kids who are, are learning all about this, uh, this programming. So next slide. So, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, we've been doing hands-on activities at the farm. We've had artist-led workshops um, at the schools and we've had youth-driven ideation and design process where, you know, the kids drew images of what they would like to, you know, the kinds of things that they would like to see in a mural at their school. And artists are incorporating those images as well as images from taken, at the uh, taken during the classes. We shared those in advance with the artists so they could start to conceptualize before they arrived. And then upon arrival, kind of create their, you know, their final, you know, sketch. Uh, and then over the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing mural painting and art installations. And at the end of the school year, we'll have a black block party with the students celebrating the murals with their families, showing the farms, showing their work, um, the kids explaining, you know, how plants grow and all that great stuff, um, as well as their creative work. So, you know, they've got all these beautiful seashells that have decorated their garden. So next slide. Um, okay, actually, this keep going. Next slide. All right, Mario Umana Academy. So this is the wall. It's on Border Street. Uh, it's right at the entrance to the school. This is a, a school. It's a, you know, very brutalist, um, very uh, gray uh, school. And it is really exciting that we're going to be able to, you know, bring a lot of color and light to the facade of this school as kids walk in from the bus. Um, and next slide, we're giving this wall to Gleo. Um, and th these were the, the images that we provided to Gleo while she was in Colombia still. Um, these are students in the workshops. You can see this uh, image uh, the, on the top row, the third image um, is, you can see the wall and that's right a view from the garden that they're planting. And so there's really this visual connection that they can make between the planting workshops and the mural. Um, you also can see that we, we brought the project to the Umana Family Day, which is an open community event. They invite you know, members of the community and all the school families to the school. And we were there planting sunflowers with kids and families. Um, and then you will, some of this imagery you will actually see in the next slide, which is the artist's sketch. So here's the sketch. Again, this is, uh, uh, you know, not the final rendering of the artwork with all the colors. This is how she presents her work. Um, so we have, uh, you're seeing basically the, the concept is the a garden of children and they're germinating and blooming and it's intended to represent the ideas and knowledge sewn into the garden workshops with the kids at the Umana school. So um, we've shared this with the Umana and they love the concept. So um, this is, this is, we're really excited. And the next slide will just give you uh, some examples of how Gleo's work is translated into the final rendering on the wall. So you can see, you know, this will be filled in with beautiful colors, beautiful use of colors, um, and, and just uh, 
incredible, uh, incredible work. Um, you know, the faces and the, the flora and fauna that she produces in her work are going to look amazing on this wall. So we're really excited about that. Next slide. Uh, the Manasa School, the Manasa, Bra sorry, the Bradley Elementary School. Um, uh, the next slide will show you uh, the, the two walls at this school that we're painting. So on the left, we see the wall for Yenny, our Boston artist who will be uh, beautifying this space, this alcove um, on the steps at the, the back entrance to the school. This is um, where right alongside the playground. So if just to the right of this image, you would see the, the full playground um, where kids are running around all day. Um, and on the right hand side, you see the, um, the uh, wall, this is a retaining wall at the entrance, uh, the bus entrance to the school. So this is um, on Faywood Ave. And this uh, is a hundred foot long wall. Um, and this is, you know, we've already cleaned that up quite a bit. So it's looking so much better now, but right now it's just a begrimed big gray retaining wall. And that's the kids entrance into school um, for a lot of these kids. So. Uh, by brightening it up with, with some colors, uh, I think it's going to really change the experience of walking into school for these kids. Next slide. Um, so these are the, this is the workshop with Yenny. So Yenny worked with the students on watercolor drawings and they were painting um, different imagery that they would love to see reflected in Yenny's designs. And, um, you know, it was really fun. We did two different workshops with this. Um, the kids absolutely loved it. And they're just so creative and perceptive about all the things that we learned about in class. So they're painting about pollinators, um, you know, birds, bees, butterflies, et cetera, insects, um, small animals, as well as all the different plants and the three sisters of uh, corn squash and beans, which are important uh, to the First Nations people of North America who were planting these uh, symbiotic, these plants with symbiotic relationships. The corn is the stock for, that supports the, the garden. The bean falls to the ground and enriches the soil with nitrogen and the squash is a cover crop. So it covers the soil. So they're painting all about these different flowering, uh, different flowering plants and vegetables and pollinators. And on the next slide, you can see Yeni's translation of this student's work. Um, and she has this beautiful statement of together we grow. Um, together with the school, we asked Yenny to come up with a, um, a statement that was not too literal, but more sort of general uh, metaphorical uh, statement coming out of um, the workshops. And with Yenny's you know, creativity, she came up with this powerful statement and it actually sort of came out of the mouths of a lot of the kids. It was like, she, uh, you know, we were talking to the kids and hearing a lot of the students talk about what their favorite part of doing this project was, and it was seeing the plants grow. So um, that was really great that I saw her incorporate that into this mural as well. Next slide. Um, here is the workshop with Gris. Gris is visiting from Colombia, um, and they together painted uh, surf clam shells that were collected on the beach in East Boston that day. Um, kids were really excited to paint the seashells. Um, and Leo, uh, sorry, Gris worked with the students um, painting and showing them, you know, different techniques. Um, we used uh, paint pens and the kids got really into it. We saw some beautiful work. I wish I could fit all the slides on this page because there were some amazing shells and just, you know, this was just one, uh, one of the students proudly showing her Bumblebee, um, but there were so many incredible shots of kids um, really excited to express themselves uh, in this medium. And then, so again, we're, we're using all of these imagery, this imagery, and Gris came up with this sketch. Um, and uh, I have a, I wasn't able to fit it on the screen. So I have a um, statement. Uh, from Greece, and I'm sorry it closed itself. Um, Felipe, do you want to read the? Um, it's in Spanish. So, um, do 
Do you want to translate that or? Sorry about this. We we got the uh, we got this statement today, but um, but we're excited to share it with you all. Um, in the meantime, while Felipe is pulling that up, if you want to move to the next slide, I can just show you. Um, this is an example of that that uh, Gris wanted to share. That is a uh, an example of how his work becomes much more detailed in the final um, in the final draft. You know, when it actually gets on the wall. So what you're seeing is in the top. Um, you know, it was a it, it's zoomed out pretty far here, but it's a much less detailed version of the final work below. Um, and he says about 40% of the detail is rendered in the original sketch. So if we go back to that first slide, um, we can see about, we can look at that and, and just see that this is only about 40%, if even that of the, um, of the sketch. But I know that um, a lot of this is intended to show the act and the feeling of a harvest. Um, Felipe, do you wanna, so, all right, I have it here, thank you. So. Uh, the translation of of Greece's, um, of Greece's statement here, it's uh, the transformative power of sowing and pollinators. The work will create a narrative that tries to give uh, about the times of sowing and the agents that affect this process as pollinators. It also focuses on the different types of ecosystems in this vital process for living beings at a planetary level. The mural will be divided into, uh, into different sections where the protagonists of certain characters and certain environments show a transition in the process of evolution of the seed. It will be a horizontal composition that will allow the viewer to have an idea of the transformation that occurs through planting. So this being a super long wall, it's only eight feet at the most um, in the middle section of the wall, but it's a hundred feet long. As, and you don't, you, unless you're standing pretty far back from the wall, you never see the entire wall. So the viewer will have an opportunity as they're walking down Faywood Ave to see a story told. And so through um, Gris's sketch and concept, he's telling this, this story of, of um, you know, planting and from germinating a seed in through planting and the, that growing into another plant and then the whole life cycle continuing with pollination and everything. And we can go to the next slide. So this is our timeline. Here we are at June 10th. Today was fa uh, family day, uh, field day at Bradley. Um, we, we were there and doing a, another workshop with the students. Um, we, did, we did some more painting. We did, um, today we had the students covering the soil with hay um, to help protect the soil from the sun. Um, and kids were having a really great time playing with water, throwing water around. It was a beautiful day um, at field day. And it was really great. Uh, to see the just so much joy with the students and they're so excited to be like working directly and collaborating with the artists. So for the next few weeks, um, next couple of weeks we'll be painting and our goal is, I mean, we'll, we will be at the last day of school having a block party where the mural will be unveiled. Um, the core crew is, it's a small team and we thank you for being so accommodating to this. Um, you know, it's really just me, myself, uh, Felipe and Conan representing Eastie Farm. Um, we've got awesome people to work with at both schools um, and a small team, Heather O'Brien, I wanna give her a, a big shout out. She's been um, designing and leading those, uh, those workshops. Um, and, uh, and you know we couldn't have done all of this without Tommy Welch, um, uh, our, our district superintendent. So um, I wanna thank those people. I also wanna thank all the, the principals uh, the administration, the staff, the kids, and the parents who have been watering their plants. Parent, kids and parents have been water, going back on weekends to water the plants when we're not in session. So just want to thank everybody. And uh, next slide. Um, just again, some, some of our, the joy of being spread at, at, you know, projects in the past. And I think that's pretty much it. So uh, next slide. Thank you all. Um, and I appreciate um, you letting us come back here to present again. Hey, thanks, Matt, and for all the enthusiasm and the hard work of putting this together and meeting our uh, required process and uh, some really exciting uh, engagements with students, it seems. So I'll open it up now for commissioners uh, who might want to make any comments or ask any questions of Matt or other members, and then we'll open it up to public comment after that. 
I'd like to make a comment, if I may, uh, just to say your presentation was very exciting to see the young people engaged in, at the level that just springs out of the photographs is really exciting for them to have this hands-on experience and connect art and healing to the garden, I think is, is super, super important. And um, I like that you have opened up for more community engagement. It's pretty obvious uh, that you've done your homework. So uh, congratulations on a great presentation. And great artist also, by the way. Thank uh, you so have much. To take a trip out there just to see this when it's all done. I hope you all come down to see this work when it's up. Uh, other comments from commissioners or questions? I have one as a, as a Boston's expert on brutalism. Uh, I'm excited to see what colors are chosen uh, for the first uh, maquette. Um, you know, the, the artists, other works have a lot of oranges in them and that's a very, from that period, oftentimes the concrete was meant to be up against uh, brighter colors, oftentimes using orange in the 60s and 70s is one of the kind of key counterpoints to the grayness of the concrete material. So I'd be excited to see that color palette start to, to blossom. Thank you for that. Other commissioner comments? Uh, Robert, would you like to make a comment? I know that you're on mute, so somebody's gonna have to unmute you if you want to. Just raise uh, your hand. I, I, just, I, I just unmuted myself. I oh, just okay. have a button on this phone. <laughs> Anyways, Matt, thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, and again, like Equa said, it was so good seeing all the young people involved in the uh, forming ideas for these murals. The murals themselves um, look so dynamic that um, and particularly the one where the, the children are gonna pass in front of the mural on their way to school. And it's such a shame to see that, that wall as is now, but it's gonna be magnificent when it's transformed um, into a, that, uh, that wonderful mural that, uh, that is going to be the entrance to their school. So again, thank you very much. And um, again, I think it's a very exciting project. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Hearing none, we can open it up. I do see representatives of the two schools here. Maybe they would like to say something before we would op open it up to the public. Is that correct, Matt? Yeah, I, I'm Claire. I'm the principal of the Bradley School. I have the unique um, position of being a neighborhood a resident as well. I live in Orient Heights. I live across the street from the school. Um, so these murals, and, and my sons will both be attending the Boston Public Schools, one of them next year. Um, so these murals, um, really will liven up our school community, but also this entire neighborhood. Um, the kind of experience that our kids have had uh, working in our outdoor classroom in the gar gardens with Eastie Farms and then translating that into art um, is just has been incredible and beautiful. And, um, you know, so many parents of, of kids have just come to me almost in tears saying how powerful the experience has been for them as families sitting around the dinner table talking about um, kids interests in um, uh, climate change and food, sustainable options, and um, how to really represent that through art, I think is, is just incredible. So um, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us today and for making your school available as a surface for artwork. Uh, was there any other representatives from the schools? Yeah. Hi, I'm Tommy Welch, uh, Region 1 School Superintendent, uh, supporting East Boston, Charlestown, and the North End. I'm sur literally surrounded by Bradley students. Both of my kids go to the Bradley. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, ah. both, both schools, come on guys. Both schools, I think, do a great job of utilizing every single space in their buildings uh, for their students. And like, this is kind of the final frontier, right? Like they have the garden right next door that has been kind of inconsistently kept up over the last seven years that I've been here. Um, and the walls, you've seen the walls, the condition of the walls. I too live in Orient Heights, so I pass by uh, these walls probably twice, three times a day. Um, and so I really appreciate the partnership with, uh, with Matt and the team. Uh, the work that they did last summer was amazing, just transforming two of the school campuses that we had uh, in towards the Jeffrey Point area. So uh, I think that the work that's going to be coming out of this, uh, this, this project this month, as well as what happened last summer, it's making uh, the other seven schools in East Boston, a little, little envious. And um, I know that they're interested in collaborating and pushing this work forward. 
um, because it really is, as, as, as two of the uh, commission members said earlier, it's, it's, it's bringing the students into the work. It's, it's helping them uh, feel that ownership of their school um, and seeing themselves in the neighborhood that they live. So I re really appreciate it. And you know, just I, I'd go the extra mile to help out this uh, organization in any way. Great, thank you for your comments. Um, I see that Natalia is here from um, the Office of Neighborhood Services. Would you like to make a comment? Yes, thank you so much for for allowing this to happen and for you know being here on a Friday and a beautiful, beautiful Friday. We really appreciate it. Um, my name is Natalia Benitez. I am the East Boston liaison for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and we wanted to come on record in support for both of these projects. So thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, are there any other school uh, or uh, city uh, representatives here that I missed? Hearing none, I will open it um, up. Mark, I'm sorry. And we have the Latinx liaison for our office as well. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you. Please, I'd like to leave in record that I'm really support uh, this project. I'm so happy that this is coming out to our neighborhood. And Matt <laughs> is the, that is the person. That is the, the guy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay, so let's open it up to any comments from the public. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand, or you can also just put your name in the chat if that's easier for you. And we can call on you if there's any members of the public who would like to make a short testimony. Kaylee? Hi, yeah, I'm Kaylee. Um, I am the Youth um, Operations Coordinator on Maverick Planning Community Services. Um, and I just wanted to say, like, I think mixing art and activism and just getting the um, kids involved and the community involved is so important and for the community to connect to these really deep issues through art is just, it, it, it really connects with them. And, and for last year, I was a little disappointed in the community engagement. This year, definitely love that you guys did a whole series with workshops with kids. That's exactly what we want I, in East Boston, we want to engage our kids. Um, the only thing that I would put in is that, um, yes, I love the kids being engaged, but I also would have liked other community members, parents even, being involved in the artwork. I think the last one doesn't really, at least for me, doesn't connect to, 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 to what, the, what I was taking apart from this project. Um, so I would have liked some parents, some other community members also involved in this process. Um, but overall, really love everything else. I love how the kids are being engaged. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate everyone's hard work on this project. I know it's not easy. Um, but yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, other comments from the public? Not seeing any more hands raised. Uh, Matt, do you just want to address uh, your public process a little bit more in terms of sure. engagement um, with, the, with parents or other groups? Is that something that you would you definitely. did, or would you consider adding that to future? Um, yeah, I mean, um, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, definitely uh, would. You know, thank you for for bringing this up. You know, we've been in touch with M MLCS um, now uh, in the last couple of days, so. Um, you know, uh, really happy to uh, to start a conversation and a relationship with Maverick Landing, and and um, looking forward to that. Um, you know, last year definitely an important distinguish uh, important to distinguish between this year and last year. Last year we invited um, Pangea Seed Foundation to bring their mural program to Boston, and this is um, more of our own mural program that we did with um, with EC Farm and Boston Public Schools. Um, and other partners. Um, we did have several um, workshops. Uh, as, as you saw, you know, we've been very much engaging the kids at the schools. Um, and there have been parents involved uh, in the process um, with, with helping the kids maintain their gardens. Um, and so the parents have, have been pretty involved because that is a lot of a it's a big time requirement. For the parents to you know keep bringing their kids back to the gardens and water them when school's not in session um so parents have been involved in that way 
um, as well as you know the schools I think have done a beautiful job communicating within each of their um, communities to the parents of like what their kids are doing and we've heard a lot of parents um, speak really positively to this program and I think it's a great idea that in the future maybe we could do some hands-on workshops where parents attend the workshops with the artists so that's a really cool idea and I'd love to see that happen um, at you know in a in the future, I think we could make that happen. So I, I really like that input. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If I could just add one other thing. Um, yeah, it's great that you can clarify that a little bit. Um, but it, overall, still some community members. I know people live by there. People are going to see it overall. So it's it's good to just involve the community as a whole. I didn't know personally that this project was going on. And me, myself, I'm, I'm pretty involved in the community. So I. I would, I would have liked to know before going forward. Great. Well, thanks for you, Kaylee, for your comments. And that's one reason why we are having this meeting was to make it a public process. That's part of our goal as in our commission. So I think, uh, you know, we can continue to try to support um, this organization in expanding its reach and in, in public engagement uh, in the future. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands raised, so I think there may be no other comments from the public. Um, uh, although there is a comment in the chat uh, uh, that, that everybody could read. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's move on to then the uh, possibility of entertaining a motion. So is there a member of the commission that would like to make a motion at this time? Well, I'm happy to make a motion. Uh, I make a motion that the um, Boston Art Commission accept the design and implementation of this series of murals in East Boston. Great, thank you, Ava. Okay, thank you, Camilla, for the second. Uh, so I will go through uh, the list. And uh, if you agree with the motion, please say yes. So beginning with Aqua. Yes, for me. Thank you. Uh, Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Bob? Yes. Brian? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the motion passes. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for all your hard work and thanks for Thank sticking with our so project. Much. Thank we you so much. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing these uh, in place. Uh, just one last qu clarifying question. When will they be done? The, uh, the murals are going to be done on the 23rd of this month. Um, okay, great. Assuming we don't get too many rain days, um, you know, we've, I think we've got like maybe, maybe a little wiggle room for rain days, but it, it should, everything should be done on the 23rd. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, we look forward to seeing them. And uh, we have one last order of business, which is to adjourn uh, on a very beautiful uh, afternoon. I hope everybody gets outside and enjoys the day. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Thank you, Bob. Uh, do I hear a second? I'll second that. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, and uh, I will say yes if you agree that we should adjourn. Aqua? <laughs> yes. Uh, Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Bob? Yes. And Brian? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. We are officially adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for thank you all. Thank, so you. thank you, everyone. Great to see okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have Bye -bye. wonderful weekends. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye.